Welcome to Design Diary, the podcast where you get to look inside my board game design notebook as well as what's going on inside my head. We look at a new word each day from the sense of mechanics, tone, theme, or inspiration for a full game. Today's word is... Embarrass. To cause to experience a state of self-conscious distress, to place in doubt perplexity or difficulties, to involve in financial difficulties, to hamper the movement of, hinder or impede, to make intricate, complicate, to impair the activity of a bodily function or the function of a bodily part. All right, that's that's quite a definition for a word that we yeah. we actually know. <laughs> uh-huh. So, I, before, it's a lot deeper than I thought. It, it really is. I didn't half of those. I didn't expect. Um, which which one mm. of those definitions did you go with? Because I went with a specific so I one. Meant, I went with uh, humiliate, or I guess a sp- specifically instill like doubt in okay. another person. I guess. Um, which where did you go? I went with uh, to. I just lost it, but to hinder or complicate. Okay. All right. Um, and I'll, I'll go first. About if you that. Want. I don't have, I don't have a ton. So sure. <laughs> as I wrote, I, I was writing, 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 and then I wrote flux can do exactly what I'm thinking of. <laughs> so I, there was almost no point <laughs> to go. Yeah, it's already done. And there's almost no point to go forward, but I did uh, change it to the way that I was thinking more. And I was thinking of a, a very competitive flux style game where you're changing rules but it was like a tableau line building game so everybody has a line of cards in front of them and the line of cards are going to tell you what you do on your turn and you start out with the one card in the center that just says draw a card and play a card and that one never changes that's like the base every turn you're going to draw a card and play a card uh but what you can do is Mm -hmm. it's like a deck builder in that you're buying cards and then putting them into other people's lines or decks or something like that Basically, you were putting them into the lines, but I thought of a way that you would put them into a deck and they would shuffle and they'd come out and that was their hand for the turn and they did things with that. But anyway, so on your turn, you can buy a rule and you buy it in any quantity. If you pay the low cost, you get to give it to any player of your choice. Uh, Or it might be determined by the card somehow. I don't know. You can pay the medium cost and play it to both of your neighbors on the left and right. And you can pay the high cost to play it to all other players. So it might just say, uh, you know, pay one dollar. And it, they have a timing as well. So when you play a card, it goes to a specific position and it's determined by zones. It'll say this is the first card. It'll say it's your last card. It'll say right before the starting card or right after, which is the center. Uh, it'll say your choice of your front zone, which is everything before the starting card, choice of your back zone, so anywhere in the back, or choice, 100% choice, player choice, where they can play it wherever they want. So I give you a card, uh, something that says pay $1. And if it's your choice, you might play it at the end so you can do everything because if you can't pay that dollar you have to stop and your turn's over so you might want to draw a card play a card and then if you don't have to pay a dollar then you're you're done your turn so basically you're building these zones Mm -hmm. um and it uh it's highly competitive and there's it's highly you know uh got you know whatever take that and gotcha and it could be reduced a little bit by telling you what player it has to go to uh for the single player when you're playing against one other person but I thought of just these tableaus that you're kind of building, and then with the deck building thing in mind, possibly all the cards come up, they get sent to the side, and then you deal a you know a set of five cards out every turn or something like that. But without the deck building, uh, playing to these zones and complicating to the point of a hindrance, and I wrote that to complicate to the point of a hindrance, and I wrote flux as the answer to that, <laughs> which the game flux oh. can get so complicated to the point where it's just extremely frustrating. This is mm-hmm. not intended for that frustration on you. It's intended on putting that frustration on everybody else. So, right. And then I thought what's neat about it is that if certain things go to one player, certain go to all, certain go to your neighbors, everybody's turns a little different than the others. And then with some of the choices and where you place them, everybody's tableau is a little different than each other. And that's as far as I got. And it could be embarrassing mm. to the point where this one says, Interesting. you know, the last card says jump up and down and tap your head or something along those lines. Is the other embarrassed that I didn't get to introduce the social embarrassment? <laughs> yeah, and I think that this could be would just literally terrify me, me uh, and never make me want to play. Have you the played? Game. Uh, <laughs> is it is it Mountains of Madness? Is that what it's called? Uh, uh, yes, Mountains of Madness by Rob Davio. Right, it has all the like. I have not. Okay, it has. I didn't know it has a lot of stuff like that in it, 
where you know it's you kind of to... like curses yeah yeah but they're very physical and and it's surprising in that style of game like it was it was a shock i knew it before i bought it but i didn't know it as i was kind of checking it out and i was like oh that's <laughs> that's neat and weird and sort of like uh pulls you out of the game i don't know yes it does have cosmic horror seeing <laughs> someone else shake in front of you and <laughs> and dance and all that so the only thing that, that I can pull out of this idea is if I pared it down to a very low level of this, having a line builder with zones that you kind of determine how you do by paying these costs and going to your opponents and them having some choice in where things go could be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. All right, so what do you um, the, the The path that I went was entirely juvenile <laughs> in that the word embarrasses the word ass in it oh, um, man. but i'm talking about about donkeys specifically uh one of my favorite games um that isn't available in the united states as far as i know for now um it's called crazy donkey okay. uh, but it was originally published as who's the ass <laughs> and it is it is a game in which you pass a donkey card a double-sided donkey card um through ladder climbing um, mechanisms. Okay. And if you're stuck with a donkey at the end of the round, you get plus 20 points, and points are the worst. And so it, everyone who gets stuck with the donkey just is ashamed of themselves that they couldn't get rid of it in time. And so <laughs> what I wanted uh, was I was imagining, imagining like a small village in which uh, the everyone plays as donkeys and they are trying to prank or i guess trying to hurt the village that has has kind of enslaved them to do menial physical tasks and so they want to get one over the humans that that have uh have worked to them yeah of course and so so i specifically was imagining like a board with you have people on the board doing tasks and then you have donkeys that can move around and and what I was imagining as pranks are specific missions that you need to accomplish against these people. Um, there could be two different teams where one uh, half play donkeys, half play people, and they have to figure out which donkey is coming for them um, to kind of keep their eye out on on uh, specific pranks that are happening. Maybe it's positional with donkeys having to be within a certain space or in a certain area um, as other other uh, people, um, if they need to team up with other donkeys to uh, do more complex pranks that earn them more points, um, and I, I, I thought it's interesting that, that if you introduce a element of deduction, like you're trying to find out who Which is donkey? coming for yeah. you or what, or yeah, or what they're going to do to you, in a lot of in a lot of deduction games, there is one piece of information that you are finding out, and if you find it out, the game ends. Um, there aren't smaller steps that you could find out that would help you, um, or just a goal that happens a lot rather than once in the game. So like in Clue, you're trying to find the murder weapon, the house and the, um, person, but once you find that out, the game ends. But yeah, and even missions, what's interesting about that is once you've even declared what you think it is, it's over too. For right, you at exactly. least. Yeah, you are out. And so I want I want people to feel clever, um, like we were talking about in the in the Slack in the Slack uh, conversation. You can make people feel I clever, people it's a feel, good game. Yeah, I want people to feel clever multiple times in the game, rather than either guessing it right and feeling great once or getting it wrong and you're out of the game completely. I want people to be able to make guesses and still be in the game. Yeah, you want to feel clever um, and then be able to do something off of that instead of just being like, I won. Right. Exactly. You, yeah, you want to work off the knowledge that you have gained. Um, so that was what I was thinking of. Uh, just specifically, like, I guess the real takeaway is that I want to have, like, a de- deduction game that is, that can be segmented. Yeah, not like um, Dead Drop, where it has multiple rounds of the same deduction game. Yep. It's where you you find out different pieces that aren't exactly part of the same whole. Um, so yeah, yeah I that's thought, neat. I thought that was 
pretty interesting. And that's so, so far. I like, really like. That's so far from embar. Like the things that I think of with embarrass is a party game where we're you know teasing each other and things like that. It's very different direction. So that's cool. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you? There's a there's a game in beta, um, a video game called Spy Party. That sounds I've heard really of it. interesting. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of the feel that I would want, where there is someone coming for you, but you don't know who and you don't know when it's going to happen. But I don't want it to have the kind of dread of escape from the aliens in outer space or yeah. specter ops, where if you are found, you are dead. It's If you are found, then you have to do something different. You need to go to plan or B. You have, yeah. yeah, or you have to change everything up, because plans change. And one mistake shouldn't derail the entire game. That's cool. So, what I have. So you went with Donkey, which reminds me of something really terrible that I would make a game about, and it's that we have a cheesesteak. <laughs> we have a cheesesteak place here in Camden, New Jersey, which is like murder capital of the world many years in a row. Um, but the cheesesteaks, <laughs> the cheesesteaks are the best, and they are on round seated Kaiser rolls, and it's like the weirdest thing ever. And uh, you have to venture into uh, the depths of, of Camden, New Jersey to get these cheesesteaks at Donkey's Place. <laughs> so It's such a weird name, like Donkey's Place. You don't want to eat at Donkey's Place. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, that's a, it was on a, uh, the middle, the show The Middle. It was on The Middle recently. They went to oh, okay. Don- Donkey's Place. Cheesesteak sounds real good right oh, now. Oh, tell me about it. So, yeah, that's, that's where I would go with, yeah, with so the ass side of it that you have just recently um made our podcast go from a g rating to a what pg-13 mm-hmm. i just said a swear yeah probably well, no pg, PG. It's yeah probably PG. my seven-year-old son would be dying at that whatever the name of that <laughs> game was that you mentioned who's the ass who's the ass he he would he would just point at it and giggle and run away <laughs> Cool. Well. Yeah. Unfortunately, my copy does say "Crazy Donkey." It doesn't have the <laughs> better title. Who 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 makes that in, in America? Is it Crazy Donkey, or or that was still a uh, in, a, in America? It was it was Who's the Ass? Oh, okay. but of course, uh, it's been out of print for a, a long time. Um, I think it's. Ooh, I don't know. We packed up all our games, so oh. I can't tell you right now. <laughs> but can, if we, you are in Google. Europe, I suggest looking it up. Awesome. Cool. Well, this episode did not embarrass me that we weren't able to come up with something. I think we yeah, did. Yeah, we crushed it. <laughs> we did. All right, cool. So we'll do it again next time. See ya. See ya.